So it's good to remind one another and to remind ourselves that God loves us. Because sometimes we can either become so down on ourselves we get too low, and then other times we can get too high on ourselves that we get become arrogant, right? And so last week we also talked about how Jesus was with his disciples and they're arguing amongst themselves who was better. I'm better than you. Oh, really? No, I'm better than you. No, I'm the greatest. No, I'm the greatest. Everyone turned into Muhammad Ali. I'm the greatest of all time. I'm so pretty, just look at me. <laughs> and yet, where's the humility? Because God called us to be humble, to serve one another. And that was his lesson to the others. He was saying, like, look, you're thinking too high of yourselves. You're called to be humble, to serve one another. And that he had been explaining to them, and we talked about this before, and it keeps coming up, anyone who is not against us is for us. So how do we know who's with us and who's against us? How are we all one in Christ and yet we have different beliefs? I think it's one thing to try and understand this theologically and spiritually, because spiritually we're united through the Holy Spirit. And yet, at times like this, we have different beliefs, especially politically. And it's still being one of those things in which we wrestle. with What does it mean to be one? Because when we recite the Apostles' Creed, we say we all believe in the Holy Catholic Church. Who remembers what Catholic means? Universal, so the Holy Universal Church. Sometimes it's helpful to say that instead. The Holy Universal Church. That we are all one in the Universal Church through the invisible power of the Holy Spirit. Because when we get to heaven, is there going to be a Roman Catholic section, and a Presbyterian section, an Episcopalian section? I don't think so. So how are we all a part of the family of God, and yet there's so many different denominations? I think one time I checked and Wikipedia said there were 45,000 different denominations. 45,000 in the world. Are they all right? Does one of them have all the answers? So what does it mean that we are called to be one and yet we're also called to grow in spiritual growth? Because God loves us the way we are, but God loves us too much to let us stay the way we are. That God wants to change us and yet change is hard. Most people don't like to change. They don't like change at all. The only constant is change. And that we believe that we are being changed by the Holy Spirit in some way, one or another, when we worship God. That God is changing us. That God is sanctifying us. Helping us to grow spiritually. And yet, at times in my life, I know I didn't want to grow or change. And yet the Holy Spirit would be pressing upon me or nudging me. In ways and if we're willing I think we can continue to change throughout our lives because we want to believe that the Holy Spirit is here don't we we don't come to worship just to see one another do we nobody has an answer no. everyone's afraid like we're coming hoping and believing the Holy Spirit is here that God is here right we're not just going to some Gathering, We're going to worship the Lord, that the Lord is present and going to change us and do something. Help us to hear something new that will motivate us, give us hope, heal us. Man, wouldn't that be great if every single person was healed today in some way? Maybe we won't know it. Maybe it's this much. But I want to believe every time I go to church that I'm being changed, that I'm being healed, at least my spirit. It's being changed. So we come to church, or we should come to church, expecting the Holy Spirit to be here, expecting the risen Lord Jesus to be present, to be speaking to us, guiding us, right? And that Christians are called 